So we have heard about this CD30. CD30 is a membrane-related and Golgi perinuclear-related antigen that identifies Reed sternberg cell in a patient with Hodgkin's lymphoma. This CD30 um, antigen is actually a receptor of tumor necrosis factor or TNF superfamily. And once the CD30 is activated, it sends a signal inside those cancer cells and that upregulates some of the positive pathways that eventually culminates into a final common called NF kappa B and that translocates to the nucleus leading to growth and development and nurturing of the cancer cells in the milieu of multiple other inflammatory cells in a classic Hodgkin's lymphoma lymph nodal tissue. So this actually seems like that the CD30 and its CD ligand, they are necessary for the survival of the Hodgkin's lymphoma cells. So can you, Dr. Galal, tell us a little more about the CD30, um, whether it is expressed in all Hodgkin's lymphoma cells and uh, why it is so important in the diagnosis and whether CD30 is expressed in any other cells in our human body. CD30 is a very important uh, uh, receptor uh, that goes through a pathway in the cell intracellularly uh, that affects the epiptotic process uh, that makes actually under normal circumstances goes through the nf kappa b and other pathways that will lead to the um, enhancement of the uh, or, or prevention of the apoptosis so enhancement of the cell uh, uh, survival so blocking this kind of receptor might affect the uh, cell uh, survivor and kill these cells as they are tumor cells cd30 is expressed in almost all reed sternberg cells of patients with hodgkin's lymphoma it is not only important for diagnosis it is also a target for the topic of our today's discussion, precision medicine. A excellent example of targeted drug delivery system. So CD30 monoclonal antibodies, when first used in Hodgkin's lymphoma, just the naked antibody, did not really show us much response. But Brentuximab vidotin is a paradigm-changing antibody drug conjugate. What that means, the anti-CD30 monoclonal antibody has a linker. And with this linker, a toxin is attached. And the name of the toxin is MMAE. It's very interesting. This toxin was originally extracted from a sea animal called sea hare. I didn't even know such an animal existed until I looked it up. And yeah, it looks like a blob on the ocean floor. And this toxin is very potent. What happens when this antibody drug conjugate carrying that toxin is given to a patient with Hodgkin's lymphoma, this antibody will target the CD30 positive cancer cells. And on the surface of the cancer cells that carries this CD30, this entire antibody drug conjugate will be internalized the linker will dissociate inside those cancer cells, and then the MMAE is a very potent toxin that breaks down the tubulin structure of the cancer cells. And if you remember your biology 101, the tubulin is very important in making mitotic spindles, cell division and growth, and hereby, by breaking that internal structure, the cancer cells die of an apoptotic programmed cell death. So this is a fantastic way of a targeted precision medicine drug delivery system, like a payload reaching only for those CD30 positive cells. So Dr. Galal, how does Brentuximab vidotin differs from other antibodies like rituximab or intracellular molecules like Everolamus that I hear uh, we are using in patients with Hodgkin's disease. 
So when you look at um, other target therapies like rituximab and um, other um, uh, monoclonal antibodies, these are naked antibodies that goes directly to the receptor. Uh, the brintuximab vidotin has the advantage of um, a, a chemoconjugated uh, kind of antibody that once it hooks the, to the receptor, it can internalize the uh, chemotherapeutic agent, which is the uh, monomethyl or statin E, uh, that's actually a microtubule uh, disruptive uh, agent that will lead to the cell death. Also having an antibody on the surface of the cell that might mediate the uh, cell mediated uh, uh, um, dependent or cell dependent uh, death of these cells by the macrophages and the Im other immune system. Um, and that might lead to um, lysis of the cell with a different mechanism. Um, when the cell rupture, uh, the residue of the um, uh, MMAE uh, uh, might lead to uh, killing of the other tumor cells around it uh, in, the, in the tumor environment. The advantage of having uh, brintuximab vidotin that it's really a um, different mechanism of, of uh, action that leads to uh, uh, tumor uh, uh, cell uh, killing effectively. So you have the chemotherapy uh, agent that's uh, directed to these cells, and you have the uh, immunological part of the uh, of the uh, process itself that will lead to a very effective treatment and in combination with other chemotherapy we've seen so much ad uh, advantage uh, in different diseases like the Hodgkin's lymphoma, the uh, peripheral T-cell lymphoma um, and other uh, B-cell lymphomas that would have CD3 positivity. So it's adding really to the, uh, um, in, uh, the effect of chemotherapy that's traditionally used in this kind of disease and killing of these uh, tumor cells. So uh, the preclinical data actually was in the animal model um, that uh, showed uh, effectiveness of the uh, naked antibody. And then the naked antibody was used uh, in different uh, CD3 positive uh, lymphomas. Uh, however, it didn't prove to be uh, really effective. So the progression of that went to the immunoconjugates and also the um, uh, reduconjugates and then ended up with the uh, brintuximab vidotin with a chemotherapeutic agent on top of it. Uh, that worked very effectively. So the first kind of phase one uh, trials uh, in the clinical arena was in the CD3 positive different hematologic uh, malignancies in the relapse and refractory uh, stage that showed really efficacy. Then after that uh, was introduced to post transplant um, uh, pro uh, sort of consolidation for patients that have high risk of relapse. And then now has been used more and more in the relapse refractory and the frontline therapy as we discussed in classical Hodgkin's and T-cell lymphoma. The uh, CD3 positivity um, is based on the immunohistochemical or flow cytometry testing uh, that would define the CD3. Initially, we were uh, getting reports from pathology by positive or negative, but recently we're getting percentages, which is much better. Uh, in the clinical trials, um, many of the studies use the 10% as a cutoff, but really there is no clear standards. Uh, and for instance, when in cutaneous T-cell lymphoma, when we have CD30 positivity, even at a very low level, we see a very good responses for um, brintuximab vidotin as a single agent. So um, I think that positivity and negativity and the percentage are valid. However, uh, there is no clear um, uh, cutoff uh, uh, of the positivity there.